this dimension looks messy so let's change a few things about this first let's turn off this alternative unit and change the primary unit to metric with only one decimal and move our text closer to dimension line with text offset i think this could be good make our text size a bit smaller okay and also we can change these extensions in this part hey guys welcome back to this channel i'm ella and in this video we are going to learn about dimensions in depth we are going to work on tips and tricks and some hacks that we can use in our project to make our life easier first we are going to work on each part of edit type and then we will use them to complete this plan so let's start if you go to annotation tab you will see all of the dimensions here let's start with aligned we can use aligned for basically everything in our plan let's create a dimension for this part and check all of the parameters on this select your dimension and go to edit type first parameter in graphic section is dimension string type if it's on continuous you can just simply create all of the dimensions continuously like this and you will have dimension for each part that you click but let's duplicate and put it on baseline in this case after the first dimension when you click on second part you will have your dimension calculated from first point and if you click on third point you will have it from again first point this is not usual and we mainly use continuous and if you change it to ordinate you will have another type of baseline but in this case you will have all of the numbers in one dimension line the second parameter is a leader type we have arc or line it's used when you want to move your text away from your dimension line this arc is a leader you can either use this type or if you change it to line so you will have a straight line and also with this option you can add shoulder to it if you change its number let's go with one and apply you will have this little shoulder and if you want to have more you can just change its number something like this leader tick mark is a sign that you can use for this part just to show where this text belongs and you can use different shapes for that part you can use dot arrow and diagonals or you can just use nothing for it next parameter is show leader when text moves and it has two options one is away from origin and another one is beyond witness line if you use away from origin whenever you move your text away from its origin you will have this leader here but if you change it to beyond witness line and apply you will only have your leader when you move away from witness line what is witness line it's this line in dimension we have two types of lines this is our dimension line and this is our witness line and these two parts are their extensions and we're going to learn how we can use them so whenever you move your text beyond your witness line you will have this leader but as long as you are between in these two limits you will not see your leader next part is tick mark by tick we mean these two signs here and we have different types of them as we saw in leader tick mark so you can use either one of them for example let's test this dot here next part is line weight with line weight we can control the thickness and the weight of these two lines let's put it on seven to see its difference and with tick mark line weight we can change the thickness of our tick mark so let's change it to nine for example and this is what we have in some cases we might need to change these dimensions next part is dimension line extension 
as i said this is our dimension line these two extra lines here are its extensions it's on 2.4 and if we change it to let's say 5 we will have something like this with witness line control we can change the dimension the distance of our witness line from its element or from itself if it's on gap to element you will have a gap between your element and your witness line if you change it to fix the dimension line you will have it near your dimension line and with witness line length you can control this dimension so let's just put it on 5 and change its distance. Witness line extension is the extension of this part. This is our witness line and this part is its extension. If you change it to let's go with 5 again and hit apply, you will see it will change. In witness line tick mark, you will again see all of the tick marks that we used above. And if you select one of them, you will see a tick mark in the end of your witness line, which might help in some cases. Let's put it on 9 and move to center line. Center line is used when you want to create dimension for center of an object or element. You can understand it better with an example, but first let's see its symbols here. You can either put it on north arrow or center line. Let's use center line first. And with center line pattern, you can change it from solid to all of these line patterns here. Let's use demolished, for example. For its tick mark, you can again use all of these tick marks here. Arrow, for example. Let's check it on this window here. Go to annotation and select align and use it to create dimensions for this window now you can see center line mark here and this demolished line pattern if you select your dimension and go to edit type and change your symbol to north arrow it will change to this symbol and if you change its pattern from demolished to let's say center it will change accordingly we changed our center line tick mark to arrow field and you will see it when you create your line from this point to its center and only in this way you will see this part but if you want to add to this line to here it will disappear next part is interior tick mark interior tick mark refers to tick marks that are between end and start tick mark you can either use the same tick mark as you used for first and last tick mark or you can use others i think one of the most important parts is color with this option you can change the color of your dimension to something other than black last part in graphic section is dimension line snap distance and with this snap you will have better control on the distance between your dimensions when you want to create like three or two layers dimensions our next parameter is width factor and it will affect on the width of our text so let's turn it to three and see how it will work i'm not sure if large number for width factor could help us or not but when it comes to a smaller dimension this factor definitely helps. With underline, you can create a line under your text. And if you check this box, you can make it italic or bold like this. You can change your size with this number. This is exactly the number that we see here. And Arial is our text font. And we can change it according to our scale and the type of dimension that we want to use. Text offset is the distance between our text and our dimension line. So if you put it on 0.5, it will be closer to your dimension line. Or if you put it on three, you will have more distance between them. Read convention is used for vertical dimensions. 
let's create a dimension for this part if you change it to horizontal all of them will rotate and also if you put it on right and then up all of the text will be shown on the other side of your dimension line with text font you can change the font of your text and I think this option could affect the most on the style of your dimension line. For the background of your text, you can either use opaque or transparent. If you want to see the other side of your text, you can put it on transparent. But if you want to see your text clearly, no matter what kind of background it has, you can change it to opaque. Next part is show opening height. If you check this box and create a dimension for window, you will have two different numbers. Dimension text is shown above your dimension line. So this is your dimension and this is your height. If you go back to edit type and uncheck this, you will see that this number disappears. Text location refers to leader line. It's either in line or above. When it's set on above, if you move your text away from dimension line, you will see that your text will be above your leader line. But if you change it to in line, your leader will be beside your text. Last parameter in text section actually depends on prefix and suffix. If you add prefix or suffix to your text, let's go with A for example, and distance, distance, and B. And if you apply these, you will see distances and spaces between suffix and prefix and your text number. But if you check this box, you will see these distances will disappear unless you yourself have created them. In unit format, you can change the format of these dimensions regardless of the units of the project. So as you can see, this is checked. So these dimensions are following the unit of your project. But if you uncheck this, you can change it from metric to let's go with centimeter or millimeter or if you want to change it to feet or any other dimension that you want to use you can also change its rounding and unit symbol let's put it on millimeter and one decimal places okay and apply we can also add another unit to our dimension. If you're using metric unit and you also need to have these dimensions with feet or inch, you can use this alternative unit. With this option, you are choosing about the location of that second unit. You can either use right or below. Let's go with below for now and change this unit to inches for example. Okay. And if you apply, you will see that you will have another number in this part, which is an inch. In units per fix, you can add something like this to show this number is in inch. Or if you want, you can add suffix as well. This last part is for equality. If you have two equal parts, you can change their icon. Let's test one. Go to annotate and create dimension for let's say between this window this grid and this window if you click on eq here you will have this eq sign here if you go to edit type and change this to something like this and apply you can change it sign Okay, now let's delete all of these and start using these dimensions for our plan. If you select align again, you can see two different options here. In this part, which is place dimensions, you can select wall center line, wall faces, center of core, faces of core to change the placement of your dimensions on walls. So you have better 
accurate dimensions. In the next part, you can either choose individual references or entire wall. If you choose individual references, you can just create dimensions for each part that you want. But if you select entire wall and then you select a wall, you will have a dimension for exactly the length of that wall. Let's put our placement on wall faces and this on individual references. Let's start from here. We're going to have three layers of dimensions in these two parts. First, we are going to select details, maybe the dimension of our call. And after that, in this part. If we have any window or door, we can select them, but we don't have anything here. So we're going to move in this part. This will be our staircase. So we can create one here, one here to show the exact size or length of our stair. After that, we can again select this column and this column, this wall, the thickness of this wall and for last part this comp. This dimension looks messy so let's change a few things about this. First let's turn off this alternative unit and change the primary unit to metric with only one decimal and move our text closer to dimension line the text offset i think this could be good make our text size a bit smaller okay and also we can change these extensions in this part let's move up and change witness extension to let's go with one or and also dimension line extension to again one apply and okay for our next layer we usually look at the larger scale so we just need to select our grids for this part and the third layer should be the length of the whole building you can either start from here or from the first grid let's go from this part to the last grid and we're going to just do the same for this part select align and start from here to this column and then you can select this part and after that here this part and this column if you can't find the right place you can just press tab like this and after that here and then this part and our final column as you can see we need to change our read convention so select your dimension go to edit type and change read convention from right then up to horizontal or up then left i think in horizontal we can read this better and also let's make our font size a bit bigger because it's hard to read sometimes so let's put it on three and apply Next layer, as I said, is our grid. I accidentally click outside and this dimension is not finished. But if you want to continue this dimension, you just need to select it again. And with this option here, edit witness line, you can continue creating dimensions. Okay, now for the last part, let's create our lens in here move this here and this here for interior parts we don't usually have any specific rule but try to create something like this for interior parts as well select a point where you can create the most dimensions and they should be useful actually for example if you start from this part you can create a dimension for our balcony and then our room and this corridor and this step. after that this part 
and also this last part could be better to analyze your plan before and try to use less dimensions to keep the plan clean as much as possible create one here if you want you can create one here just to have the thickness of our wall and after that for this part which i selected by tab and this wall finally here and here let's create another one vertically for example we can create a dimension for this part just to have the bits of our room and after that we can create something for this part to have more details about this wall in this space about the dimensions of our door and window and also for all of these parts now you know all of the rules and it doesn't matter if you have furniture or specific areas or elements you just need to use all of these techniques to to set dimensions after align we have linear which is exactly like align after that we have angular which we can use to create dimensions for angles and again its edit type is exactly like align with only differences in primary unit which you need to use degrees or gradient or radians for it and also radial diameter and arc length are exactly like angular if you know how to customize your dimension for a line you, you can do the same for these two parts next part is a spot elevation with this you can create this sign this symbol for showing the elevation the height of your plan of that floor maybe you can use this either for your floor or for any element that you want to show its elevation or height as you see if you select a spot elevation and move your mouse over stairs you will see its number will change accordingly so you can create this for each step each thread of your staircase the spot coordination is kind of the same but it shows the coordination of that point and next part is our spot slope which you can use to show the slope of ramp for example let's go and test it here this is our ramp and if you select a spot slope and click on that slope you will see something like this if you select your slope and go to edit type you can change its unit to maybe ratio or if you want you can use percentage or degrees let's go with degrees you can also use this part to add symbol to your dimension so yes we covered everything about dimensions in this tutorial i really hope it was useful for you and you enjoyed watching this tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video